And so today I want to share a message called the miracle of the message. The miracle of the message. I'm going to explain a little bit further down the road what this is all about. But I want to just say it's really good to see you again, man. Mm -hmm. It's really good to see you again. I love the church, man. I love God's church. It's great to see new family and friends. Good to see, you know, I was going to say old family and friends, but I mean that in like the length of time. (laughs) I mean, I mean that in the length of time, not in the age of the people. So it's good to see old friends, but not old in age, old in length. I'm going to get myself shot up here. But I want to let you guys know that you're loved. You're loved. We care for you. You know, we pray for you. We, we stand in the gap for you and believe God for you. We battle spiritually for you. Because we know that life is a journey and, and we, we believe that God is only just scratching the surface in all of your lives. That God has greater things that he wants to do. In 2023, somebody spoke to us a few days ago and told us and says, 2023 for you is a year of preparation. Mm. A year of just plowing and preparation. Yeah. And I believe that. Mm. And I believe the same for your life too. I believe that 2024, God's going to do great and mighty things. He's going to blow your mind. And I want to let you know that we love you, we value you, we pray for you. And I feel it's my responsibility today, as a pastor, as someone who stands before God in the, in the, in the church, I feel it's my responsibility today to remind you that the God we serve, the God we love, and the God we worship, He's a God of miracles. He is a God of miracles. You see, the God of the Bible, He's not on our wavelength. The God of the Bible. His ways in Isaiah 55 say this, that his ways are higher than ours, his thoughts are different than ours. In other words, God has his way, God has his time, God has his methods, God has his message, God has his way. I mean, who would ever have thought that in order to fulfill the plan of God, to, 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 you know, the, and ultimately to fulfill the, the plan of, of, of uh, redemption, that God would bring a baby. Yeah. A baby. Yeah. A tiny wee baby. That would be born of a, a virgin bride. See, all around that season of the birth of Jesus, there was so much supernatural spiritual activity taking place. And that's where I want to try and turn your attention to today. Because what happens is, is we can get caught up in the gifts. And don't, and don't get me wrong, nothing wrong with the gift. I'm open to any. There's nothing wrong with cake and presents and tr- there's nothing wrong with all these things as long as we understand and recognize that our worship mm. is Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's that God knows our heart. Mm. That God knows our heart when we're sitting there, that our direction of our worship is not to the present, mm. but the direction of our worship is to the greatest gift that was ever given to humanity, which was Jesus. Mm. He only came in a small box. <laughs> Small packages. But how many know small packages are powerful? And so I want to remind us this afternoon that God, he's an outside of the box type of God. He's a God who thinks outside of the box. In fact, when Jesus was crucified upon the cross on that Good Friday, they tried to put him in a box. They tried to put him in a tomb. And you know, you can't put God in a box. Because he rose again victorious on the third day. And you can't put God in a box because God is outside of any box. And so I want to encourage us today. That as we're thinking about putting stuff in boxes for gifts and presents, that our God is outside of the box. He's outside of any constraint, any restriction, any limitation. He's a miracle working God. And I want to encourage you this afternoon, before we get into this message, to leave. Any preconceived ideas of what God wants to do in this place today. I want you to leave at the door any preconceived ideas of who you think your God is. I want to encourage you today to look, remove any limitation, remove, remove any restriction, yeah, but remove any yeah, buts, and focus on the I am this afternoon. Reject any small thinking. Open our hearts and our minds to the God of the universe. Just take that for a minute. The God of the universe is our God. He's not just some wooden wooden idol that's carved from a tree. He's not some mystic potion that you can charm up. 
He's not some crystal or chakra or some herb or some spice or some. He's none of these. He's the creator of all these things. Our God is the creator of all these things. The creation bows to the creator. Our God is the God of the universe. He's able to do above and beyond what we could even dream, think, or imagine. Ephesians 3.20. And I don't know about you, but my imagination runs wild sometimes. Hello. He's able to do above and beyond these things. Let's open up our Bibles today. The book of Hebrews chapter 1. And the, the scriptures are going to be behind me on the screen. If you're at home, you can read along with your Bible there at home. I know that if you're watching at home, that you're a good Christian. You've got your Bible, your pen, your highlighter. You've got everything there. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, reading from the New Living Translation. Long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. And now in these final days, he has spoken to us through his Son. God promised everything to the Son as an inheritance, and through the Son, he created the universe. The Son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sin, he sat down at the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. What a powerful three verses right there. You know, one of, a couple of the things I want to just point out straight away within the verse was this, was that long ago God spoke. How many know that's good to know? But the most important thing, to be honest, the more encouraging thing is like this. It says, and in these last days, he's still speaking. Yeah. He, he, he's still speaking. You see, God sent Jesus to communicate his message in a way that we can understand. The miracle of the message is that God speaks to us today. So that we can know him and draw near to him. You see, we don't serve a God of religion, but we have to try and seek and do all these good things to find him. We serve and love and worship a God who continually desires to reveal himself to us. He reveals his character, he reveals his nature, he reveals his will, he reveals his plan. It's really not difficult. You know, you hear people say, well, I don't know God, where is God? I, I, I'll tell you, when you want to see God? Read about Jesus, pray to Jesus. The Bible says that he's the, he's, what does it say here in the verse? It says this, that, this, the, the, uh, that the sun radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. In other words, Jesus is God in the flesh that came to reveal himself to man. That's how much God loves us. <laughs> That's how much he loves us. That he made a way to find you. The Bible says that we are saved by grace through faith, not that we can boast. We didn't do nothing to find him. I know sometimes when people give their testimony, they say, oh, I found God. Was he lost? <laughs> we didn't find him. We just, we just surrender to him. Yes. Through the revelation of Jesus. Yeah. You know, last week my phone provider, I'm, I'm with Three Network on my mobile phone. And last week, for the best part of 24 hours, my whole phone network went down. Mm. Could message, could text. It was only work on Wi-Fi, but when I left the house and went on to 3G, my phone wouldn't work. Mm. And so all day I was trying to send messages to others. But because there was a breakdown in the connection, the messages weren't getting through. And what I realized there, and God spoke to me in this way, is this as well, the connection is down, there's a breakdown in communication. Mm. Nothing was getting through from the sender to the recipient because there was a breakdown in the connection. Mm. Once the connection was restored, man, the messages started flooding in. <laughs> And today, before I really go into this message, I want us to take time, just one minute to pray. I want us to pray for our connection. I want us to pray for our reception. I want us to pray for our openness to the voice of God. Because life can get busy. 
And especially this time of year, we're working, we're laboring, we're doing all these things. There's many, many different things. Even within this church today, many, many, many of us have different things going on in our life and life can get busy. And what happens is when life gets busy in any relationship, if there's no continual connection, the communication breaks down. And so we think we're hearing. Have you ever heard something and you think you heard what you heard, but you actually heard something wrong? And because of the connections poor, you picked it up wrong, and you only picked up half of what you picked up, and you picked up the bad point, but you never heard the good point. And you, you took the whole conversation the wrong way because you never really heard it properly. We can be like that with God sometimes. God's always speaking, but how is our connection? In our main text this afternoon, we're reminded that God spoke in previous generations and we're thankfully reminded that he continues to speak in this generation. But are we listening? Are we really listening? Are we really, really taking time to connect with our creator? Are, 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 how is our spiritual antenna today? Are we receiving messages from God? Are we hearing his voice? Are we, are, are we actually walking in this born again birthright of my sheep will know my voice? For if we're having trouble hearing from God, it's not that God's drifted anywhere. It's not that God's connection is the problem. My Bible tells me that he is a never shifting shadow. He never moves, he never shifts, but we do. I just want us to take a wee moment right now just to pray. And if you sense that you've been out of connection, you sense you've not been worshipping, not been praying, not been sensing God like you do. Why don't you take this moment to align yourself as we place ourselves right under the antenna of Jesus. Let's just bow our heads for a moment. Father, we just thank you that we get to start this message today. Before we go any deeper, before we listen to hear of how you speak, I ask you right now, God, through your Holy Spirit, to reveal any areas of our life, God, that need alignment. Oh Lord, we so desire to hear your voice. It's the voice of wisdom. It's the voice that guides us. It's the voice that prompts us. It's the voice that comforts us. It's the voice that confronts us. It's the voice that says to the hungry, come and eat. It's the voice that says to the thirsty, come and drink. It's the voice that says to the grieving, I am the counselor. It's the voice that says to the lost, I am the way. You're the voice that speaks to the darkness and says, I am the light and the darkness cannot comprehend me. So Lord, as the prophet Samuel said one day, speak Lord, your servants are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. So we hear that God spoke to the prophets in many ways. Which is great. Because it was the prophets that foretold the birth of Jesus. It was the prophets that mentioned and spoke about the end times, the eschatological times, the end times, the, the birth of Jesus, the, the lineage of Jesus, the lineage of Jesus, the, you know, of the, the, the coming of Jesus, that he would be the wonderful counselor, right? He'd be the Prince of Peace, he'd be an everlasting father. Right? So all the as God spoke to the prophets, and God spoke to them, and they began to prophesy about the coming Saviour. And so God spoke to the prophets of old, but he still speaks through the scripture we spoke about this morning, there in Hebrews chapter 1, that he still speaks today. And who did he speak through? He speaks through Jesus. He speaks through Jesus. And the great thing about our God is this, is that he's been continuing, he's been speaking through generation to generation. And you know when I think about God, I think about him like this, I think, man, if God spoke to people from generation to generation, language is no barrier. Distance is no barrier. Race is no barrier. Team is no barrier. Postcode is no barrier. And God's been speaking through history to reveal himself to us because that's why God speaks. Because he's a God that wants to reveal himself. And I want to just encourage us this afternoon. Never think that you know God enough to not know him anymore. 
Never think you know the scriptures enough that you say, oh, I don't read the Bible anymore because I've read it once. Because my Bible tells me that the Word of God is living and active, sharper than a double-edged sword, that it might speak to you one year, but it will cut you another way next year. And so God wants us to know Him. He wants us to love Him. He wants us to worship Him. Greater levels, deeper depths, higher heights. God reveals Himself through His creation, through His sunrise and sunset. Simple things, man. Simple things. Have you ever just watched the sunset and thought, wow, God. Have you ever just sat on the beach and watched and listened to the waves come in and just think, wow, God. Have you ever just saw the, the rain come down or watched the birds flutter amongst the trees or watched kids play or something like that and you just go, wow, God. God's continually speaking. It speaks about it in the Psalms. It speaks about it in many parts of the Bible that God speaks to us and he, wor- and he reveals himself through the sun, the moon and the stars. You know, I think, I, maybe it's just me, but I think a little bit deep sometimes. And sometimes when I see the moon, I know the kids go, Dad, look, Mr. Moon. And I, and I, think, I think, oh, look. At, but, then I, but then I get all deep and I think, wow, that's another planet up there. Right? Yeah. It's like, wow. And then another level of deepness, deepness comes on me. I go deeper and I think, wow. Like right now as we are sitting here in this church, the earth is spinning. Like we are actually on a, on a planet right now in the middle of a galaxy. Right? In church. I remember one time I was driving up the motorway and God started blowing my mind. He started to speak to me. He said, Mark, do you know that you're driving through a planet that's spinning so many miles an hour? Do you know that you're driving through a planet in the middle of a galaxy? And I'm like, jeez, I felt like it was Star Wars. <laughs> But yet, because we're his creation, we don't need no masks. We don't need no apparatus. We don't need to uh, fl- be in spaceships, or, or, or I'm sure they're coming sometime. God spoke to Moses. Here's some ways that God speaks. God spoke to Moses through the burning bush. He spoke to the Israelites through cloud by day and fire by night. He spoke to Elijah when he was hiding, depressed and suicidal with a small, still voice. He spoke to Isaiah with a vision in the temple, which made him repent. God spoke to Hosea through family circumstances. He spoke to Amos through a basket of summer fruit. (laughs) He spoke to Jeremiah through clay in the potter's house. He spoke to Joseph through dreams. God even spoke a message through a donkey in Shrek. Not donkey shrink, but you know, that's what I think of when I think of that. I would try the I would try the donkey voice, but I know I'm going to get it all wrong. I can hear it, man. I can hear it in here, but I know when I do, I'm going to get it all wrong. But there's also no place that God can reveal Himself. He revealed Himself in the year of Chaldeans to Abraham. He revealed Himself in the place of Haran and Canaan and Egypt. There's no place God God can't get through to you. He spoke to some of us in prison. He spoke to some of us through hardships. Spoke to some of us us through addictions. Spoke to some of us through life struggles. He speaks and there's no distance. There's no place. There's no nothing that God cannot use to speak to you. I've said this a few times before, but I think it's, it's fitting for where we're speaking right now about how God wants to speak. I remember one time when I, I, I really, when I came to faith, I believed everything straight away. Like literally everything. I know people have loads of questions about this and that, the resurrection, all that. For me, it was just like, boom, light went on, I believed. Although, one thing, one area, I couldn't, I just couldn't work out. The Red Sea. How could God part the Red Sea? It's crazy because I was believing in the resurrection. I was, I was believing in him coming and coming back again. I was believing in all these things. But the one thing that had me like a stumbling block was how did he part the Red Sea? And so one day I was washing some pots, some dishes. I had a bowl in my hand with some soapy water in it. And as I was standing with this bowl of soapy water, I felt the Spirit of the Lord say to me, Mark, blow in the water. And I was like, is that you? Blow in the water. So I got this bowl, 
soapy bubbles on the top of it, and I go, <laughs> guess what happened? The water parted. And he said, Mark, if you can part a bowl of water, I can part the Red Sea. You see, God knows how to speak to you. God knows where. God knows why. When God revealed that to me, man, I tell you, that was, my, that, that was like the, the deal was done. This, the, the deal was sealed. And I just know that God wants to reveal himself to us all in different areas of our life. Maybe as provider. Maybe as protector. Maybe as comforter, right? Maybe as, you know, friend. Maybe as healer. Maybe as deliverer. Maybe as refuge. You see, the great thing I love about God is he's anything but monotonous. God's not boring. Yeah. <laughs> God's not boring. When you think of how God speaks, when you think of how he speaks, when you think of how using who he speaks through, when you think that he can use a, a donkey, when you think he can use a bowl of fruit, when you think that he can use visions and dreams, when you think that he can use all these things, when you can think that, you know, God can use any means he wants to speak in any place he wants to get a hold of you, there's nothing monotonous, there's nothing boring. God lacks no variety. Yeah. He lacks no variety of getting his message across. I tell you what's monotonous, dry religion. Dry religion is monotonous. Do this, do that, hallelujah, whatever. <laughs> monotonous, same old, same old. God's not the same old, same old. Yes, he never changes, but his ways, his plans, his places, the way he does it changes and adapts to the people, it adapts to the person, it adapts to the situation. And I can't be preached to you this afternoon that no matter what situation you're going through, no matter what struggle you're facing, no matter if you feel alone or surrounded, no matter if you feel rich or poor, no matter if you feel like you've got stuff and you've got no stuff, God knows how to speak. God knows how to get through to us. God's always spoke through a variety of places and a variety of means. Again, his purpose is that we would draw near to him. That he would reveal himself to us so that we would love him more. You know, as I was <laughs> preparing this sermon, I had this flashback. Christmas at my grand's house when my grand was still with us. Christmas at my grand's. One thing you could guarantee with my gran was on the center table of the living room, there was a huge tin of Quality Street. <laughs> now you probably saw the Facebook posts lately, the social media posts, that in the 80s the, the tins were this size. <laughs> now they're like this size. And they still charge you the same. That's nothing to do with the sermon, by the way, but that's just a... Uh, but there was a guarantee when I went to my grand's house, there was a huge tin of Quality Street mm. on the table. And the great thing in why Quality Street was such a hit was because there was a variety of chocolate inside that tickled the fancy and met the needs of every single person that came. Different colours, different tastes, different crunches, different textures, different looks, different moulds. Why? Why am I saying this to you? It's because of Cadbury's. Come on. If Cadbury's could create something full of variety that meets the need of every single person in the room, then our God, Come on. our God, full of wisdom, full of power, full of sovereignty, yeah. can meet your need, can speak to you, can speak to everyone. There's no one God can't reach. There's no one God can't speak to in variety of means, in variety of ways. And so listen, if you're thinking God is monotonous, if you're thinking God inside the box, I want to challenge you. This Christmas time, as we're talking about miracles, that God is able to do anything. He's able to do it anyway. He's able to do it through anyone. He's able to do it anyone. He's able. My God, one ton of sweets could speak to so many people. How much more can our God? How many of you have moments? I mean, holy moments. Spiritual moments with the Lord. Just like that box of chocolates I was talking about there. 
How many times you see something and God gives you a sermon through that message? Right? For instance, I wrote this just down earlier because I wanted just to make sure I had something wrote down there. But you know, like when you're washing your car or you drive by a, a wash, a car wash, you know, these cars have been washed. And God will just download a message to you and he'll speak to you and he'll say, That was me. That was you. See how I've washed you in the blood of Jesus. You were filthy. You were disgusting. You were trampled on. You were, you were, you were the seasons of life and beat you up. But when they came into my hands, my foam, my soap, my blood, my word, my water, it washed you. And you can move there all shining. You can move there all gleaming. You went in one way. You went in a mess. You went in all dirty. You went in all sinful. You went in all covered. But when you came through the blood of Jesus, when you came through the sanctification process, you can came out gleaming on the other side. I don't know about you, but God continues to share stuff like that with me. And what is it God, what is he trying to say? He's speaking. It's God's way of speaking. Does anybody else have stuff like that? You see like an old piece of trash on the floor and you'll say, man, that used to be me. I was on the floor. I was an old piece of trash. I was walked upon. I was stood upon. But one day Jesus came into my life. He picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. Hallelujah. God speaks to us in these things. So first and foremost, God speaks. God speaks through the prophets. God spoke throughout history. Second thing I want to share with us this afternoon is God speaks through Jesus. God sent his son to bring a message to us in the Lord Jesus Christ. That God revealed himself directly to us. That the miracle of the message is that Jesus is the message. Jesus is the message. God revealed himself, his character, his nature through the words spoken by Jesus. That when we read the, when we read the scriptures, when we read the Bible, and we read the words of Jesus, what we're actually reading is the heart of God. You see, the revelation of Jesus is the character of God. Because Jesus came as the direct character, as the, as the one who was there, were radiating his glory. Jesus was God, and he shared when Jesus spoke, basically what was coming over was the heart of God. You see, Jesus is a living, divine Son of God. He did that to proclaim God's message and that he was the message. Jesus came to reveal God. That's what this whole Christmas season is about. That Jesus came to reveal God. You know how many people in this culture generation, you know how many people are seeking? Seeking. Seeking all the wrong stuff. Try to drink their way through, try to drug their way through, try to sleep their way through, try to get money all the way through, you know, trying to find hope and peace and all these different, you know, new age things and mystical things and you know all these different things. The purpose of celebrating Christmas is that God says, Hey, you know what? It's time that I reveal myself. It's time that I show you. It's time that I become real. That you can physically see. And so Jesus was the message. That he came to reveal God in ways that we can understand. The writer of Hebrews goes on to say this in verse 3 of chapter 1. The Son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything. By the mighty power of his command. What is his command? His word. When he cleansed us from our sins, he sat down at the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. You see, the revelation of Jesus is the divine character of God. When Jesus speaks, God's heart is being transmitted. God's heart is being transmitted through the works of Jesus. John's Gospel describes Jesus as the Word who became flesh and dwelt among them. Amen. That he dwelt, that he left the, the heavenly courts and the heavenly temples and came down, humbled himself and became flesh. If you want to look, if you want to know what God looks like, look at Jesus. 
Look at Jesus. He is the direct image of our God. When Philip, one of the apostles, asked Jesus to show them the Father, Jesus replied, Have I been among you all this time without you knowing me, Philip? The one who has sent me has seen the Father. John declares in John 10 30, he says, I and the Father are one. And so Jesus speaks to us the heart of God. You know one of the things that trips me out? You got God who's there in the heavenly places. You got Jesus after he was crucified, resurrected, ascended back into the heavens to be at the right hand of the Father, the place of glory, power, and authority. You got him there. And then because Jesus went, he sent us the, the helper, one, one, one of the same kind, the Paracletos, the, the Holy Spirit, he sent them. He said, hey, listen, I, I, I can't be everywhere all once, but I can send my spirit. My spirit will be upon those and be in those who accept me as the Lord and Savior. And they will have the power to overcome sin and walk and be my uh, disciples and be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Samaria, and Judea and all the parts of the world. And so we have the Holy Spirit within us. The Spirit resides in us. But you know what the trip thing is? The Bible says that the Holy Spirit hears what's happening in heaven and speaks to us. Have you ever imagined the boardroom of heaven? With the Father sitting there at the head of the table, with Jesus sitting there on the throne next to him, eyes like fire. Train of his robe, King of Kings, the living Word of God. Amen. And they're there having a conversation about you. Is it not? Jesus and the Father, they're saying, Hey, so what about Nan for 2024? <laughs> Holy Spirit, speak that to Nan. What about I looked at Guy, he looked away from me. <laughs> I looked at Guy, I looked at Guy, I looked at Gary, he went. I'd be saying, yeah, me. <laughs> but imagine at the boardroom of heaven. You've got the Trinity there, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all having this board meeting, this, this, this time of talking. And when the Holy Spirit speaks, he speaks the things that he's heard in heaven. He speaks life, he speaks future, he speaks prophetically in your life, he speaks of calling or destiny or identification, he speaks God's perfect will for our life over our life. And so just as God spoke through Jesus, and as Jesus ascended, he continues to speak through his Holy Spirit. You see, it never ends. It's not like God spoke back then and doesn't speak now. He spoke then, he spoke then, and he's still speaking now. But he speaks through his Holy Spirit. And one thing, the well, last thing I want to share with us is this. Why does God speak? Why? Well, I've shared it already. One of the things is that he wants us to draw near to him. He wants us to have a revelation of him so that we will love him more. So that we'll draw near to him and find out God's perfect will for our life. So that we'll know that we've been co-laborers. That we're not just safe to sit, we're safe to serve. That we're safe to go, that we're safe to preach, that we're safe to do great things that he's told us to do. But God speaks to transform us. God speaks to transform us. That's why it says in Hebrews chapter 4, the living, the word of God is living and active. Sharper than a double-edged sword, piercing, right? Piercing to a division of soul and spirit, bone and marrow, and it knows the intents of the hearts of man. And so God is still speaking through his word, through Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, and the purpose of him speaking to us is so that we be transformed into the image of Jesus and to the likeness of our Savior. And so the miracle of the message is not just that it's in a book. The miracle of the message is that it's living and active. The miracle of the message is that it's transformational in its, in, in, in its power. Yeah. That when we get the word of God into our life, when we build that relationship with God, when we build that relationship with Jesus, when that Holy Spirit's inside of us telling us what God is speaking about us in heaven, then that should change your life. When we hear, listen, God's got a plan for your life. God's got a calling for your life. God rescued you for a plan. God restored you. God called you out of the darkness so you can go and be a light. That's not just you speaking. That's God speaking through the Holy Spirit, speaking into you so that you catch it, so that you align yourself with it. God speaks to transform us. How is God going to change a nation? How is God going to change a city? How is God going to change a family? Mm. 
by speaking to those who are born again. Yeah. Transforming us in the inside so that we can be transformed on the outside. You know, I said to Zoe a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago I said to her, I said, you know what, for, for, for the first time ever, I felt a little bit conscious of my tattoo in my neck. I remember I was sitting in a meeting, I was sitting in a meeting with somebody, you know, all these other pastors and whatever, and for what <laughs> Out of the blue, I just started, I, I was like, that's what I was turning up. I was, I, was I, was I was in the meeting like that, you know, I was like showing them a good side. Like, you know, and, and I said to Zoe, I said, I said you know, for, for, for some reason, I just felt like, like, you know, like, 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 like I was less than them. Wow. Yeah. Like, you know, I, don't, I wasn't asking for an all, I was just explaining, but, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. But what Zoe said to me, man, she just reconfirmed, she said, Mark, that's your testimony. Yeah, yeah, that's not yeah. who you are anymore, that's who you used to be. Yeah. You take that off, that's not you anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your scars, your marks, I feel like I'm Barry Whitman, oh, yeah. 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 your scars, your marks, yeah. your, 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 all these yeah. things, they're proof, yeah. they're living proof yeah. that we've been somewhere, but we've been rescued, yeah. that we were lost and now we're found, yeah. that we were in the darkness and now we're in light, that we were in separated from God, but now we've been Connected back yeah. with God and God's a plan for our life. And so I want to just encourage you today and I hope and I believe that I'm speaking through inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Never be ashamed of your past. Yeah. Because God wants to use it for his future. Yeah. 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 God wants to use your past, your story, your testimony as 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 a as something for his glory. Yeah. And so God speaks to transform us. And the power of his word transforms us from the inside out. Yeah, do I look in the mirror sometimes and say, man, I've got wrinkles, I've got lines on my head, I've got grey hair. I look in the mirror and think, it's just me. But it's not just me. It's him who's living in me. Yes. Greater is he who lives in me than he yes. who is in the world. Yes. And so God's call, God's plan is to transform us from the inside, to change us on the outside, so that we would be God's change agents in this world and in the family and the communities that we live in. You see, God has a way of reminding us provoking us and challenging us. He's a miracle worker. Listen, I love this section of the Bible. If you read it in Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, and it was so timely because yesterday we went to visit uh, our little nephew who was two. His name's Little Willie, so we went to Little Willie's birthday party yesterday. He's, he's, he's only two. Beautiful wee boy, so we went there, and his mum, Emily, right, she's watching, hi, uh, but his mum, Emily, six months pregnant. Right? I, I, honestly, I, I, this was just the Lord. She's six months pregnant. I had already handed Gary in the scriptures for this, for, for the, so we could get it all up on the screen. But if you look through the, the, the birth story of Jesus, uh, as you see God doing something that maybe we may have overlooked, at this point, the Holy Spirit has came upon Mary and said, Hey, Mary, you're going to conceive a child that's. And she's like, well, how does this happen? I'm a virgin. I've never been with a man. All these things. And he says, listen, the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. There's going to be a miracle seed planted in you. And that's, you know, and all these different things. And you can imagine, they're like, oh, my man. I wasn't expecting that when I woke up this morning. <laughs> and so we pick it up in the story, Luke chapter 1, verse 36, 37. So now by this stage, God has told Mary to visit Elizabeth, who was family. Elizabeth, by this time that God told her to visit her, was, watch this, six months pregnant. So he, she goes to visit. It says here in Luke 1 verse 36, what's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. Miracle. Yeah. Another miracle. What are miracles for? To encourage more faith. People used to say that she was barren. She'd never have anything. That she'd never amount to much. That nothing good would come from her. She's past it. She's way past it. But God. But she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. Let me share with you this. Why did she go? Why did God send Mary to visit her at the sixth month and not the first month? Because by six months, as I found out yesterday when I went to see my sister-in-law, okay. by six months, there is evidence of a yeah. miracle. Mm-hmm. <coughs> evidence. 
evidence of the miracle. The baby was growing. If she went to see her on the first month, you won't see nothing. But you know what you can't argue with? Proof. You can't argue with proof. And so Mary, she was in this season of believing God and hoping for God and hoping it's all going to work out and hoping that God's going to supernaturally come through and hoping that when she sticks her neck on the line that God's going to come through, that God's going to work everything out. She can't see it. She can hear it. She can't see it. She doesn't know how it's going to work out. How's, how's, how's the man going to take this? How's Joseph going to take this? Oh, by the way, Joseph, just as I eat my dinner. Um, I've something to tell you. Imagine if I am today. I, I know. Again, another miracle that the angel speaks to. So, you know, Joseph gets the message to the strong God. But I want to share this with you today. Is that God speaks and God performs miracles, right? To birth more faith and to encourage people who are reading the miracle. And as Mary, she's here and she's doubting. And it says here, what Chester says, uh, uh, people used to say that she was barren, but she had conceived a son and now in her sixth month, for the word of God will never fail. Amen. Verse 45 says this, you are blessed because you believed that the Lord would do what he said. Mm. I don't know what it is we're believing for today. What miracle, breakthrough, restoration, healing, provision, hope, desires, salvation. And it may seem like it's in our lives today. It may seem too big. It may seem way out there. It may seem like it's never going to happen. It may seem like I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. God, where is it? And you can imagine Mary at this point as she's giving birth to Jesus or that, 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 that miracle seed been planted in her and she's thinking, what people, how, how's it all going to work out? How, 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 you know, where am I going to have it? What's, what's going to happen in my life? And God sends her a lot across to Elizabeth. And say, Mary, come here. I just, want to, I just want to bring you into an environment of miracles. I want to bring you into a place where you can see proof that God is a miracle working God. And that's what I love about church. That's what I love about coming to church. I look out from here all up across the room and whoever's watching, I look out and I see miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. I see somebody just like Elizabeth who was written off as barn, who was written off as too old, who was written off as would never produce anything, who was written off but nothing good would ever come from them. But God. And so I would encourage us this afternoon, church, that we are in miracle working territory. That God is in the business of performing miracles. And I just want you just to look at your neighbor for a minute. And just say wow. You're a miracle. If you made it. I'll make it. If you're standing. I'm standing. If you're going. I'm going. If you're praising. I'm praising. If you're believing. I'm believing. If you're. That's why church is important. Yeah. That's why fellowship is important. Because every time I come to church on Sunday, and I'll share with you from the bottom of my heart, sometimes I come to church on Sunday and I'm tired, and I'm weary, my back's gone a wee bit, you know. <laughs> but can I just tell you, sometimes, you know, when, when, when the Holy Ghost comes upon me and I'm doing all that dancing and stuff, that's usually when my back's gone. Because he's like, hey, listen, I want you to do the opposite of what your flesh is saying. Come on. Yeah, that's it. And so who, who needs a miracle? Mm. Who needs a breakthrough? Mm. Who needs God yes. to do something yes. only God can yes. do? Yes. This is the miracle of the message. Yes. That it's still living, that it's still active, that Jesus is the same yesterday, yes. today, and forevermore. Yes. He's full of power. He's full of healing. He's full of miracles. He's full of breakthrough. He's full of love. He's full of grace. Full of compassion. Full of mercy. He's full of deliverance. He's full of Salvation. Yeah. He's full. Mm. You 
can't argue with proof. You see, Christmas is a celebration of one of the greatest miracles ever. You see, when I see a birth of a beautiful child, I can't just help see God's miracle power. I, I, I get, I, I, I don't understand how people can look at children, baby born children, and you can't see God, God's miracle right here. The miniature heart, the miniature rib cage, the miniature eyes, the little hands, the little coochie coochie smiles. You can't help but see the very nature and love of God through yeah. children. And that's the biggest miracle. Mm -hmm. That God came in a childly form. Mm -hmm. God was with us. God came near so that we could draw near to him. 1 Timothy 2, 6 says this, that Jesus gave his life as a ransom for all. You see, the miracle of the message is this, is that God was re re reconciling, reconnecting. God says the time is right for me to reconnect with God, for God to reconnect with humanity. Jesus came so that God could reveal himself as the plan, as the way. Jesus himself said, he says, I am the way, truth, and the life. No one comes Unless the Father draws them. You see, the relationship there is the, is the key. And as I conclude this and just prepare, just, it's just to pray. Maybe a wee moment to ponder. Maybe a moment just to think. Maybe a moment just to allow God to restore your faith again. To believe in miracles again. To, to, to have faith again. You see, because this year, some of us, when we're talking about messages, some of us may have got messages that rocked our world. We may have got a message that a loved one was gone. We may, we may have got a message from the doctor. We may have got a message from a friend. We may have got a message from a job saying you're sacked. You may have got a message from some other place. But in the midst of all of that, there's another message. And the message is this. Is that God came so that you could have a relationship with him. So that you could find your peace, your joy, your love in him. You see, in the midst of all these other messages and things that happen in our culture, I want to share with you this message. That nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus. I want to share with you another message in this, is that to trust in the Lord with all your heart and to lean not upon your own understanding, but to acknowledge him in all of your ways and he will direct your paths. I want to share with you in the midst of all the messages, maybe angry messages, maybe bitter messages, I want to share with you another message this Christmas. Forgive those who mistreat you. Forgive those who persecute you. Forgive those who come against you. In the midst of life's messages, joy and celebration rings out in this season. And I know for some of us, as we close some of this, this has been a tough year, man. Challenges, different cities, different jobs, different you know things, loads of different things taking place, different moves, different seasons, highs, lows, sicknesses, healings, three things, low things, high things, dark things, whatever. But I want to encourage you at this time of the year that in the midst of all the other messages you received, I want to share with you the best message you'll ever receive. Was that Christ came. Christ came as the doorway. Christ came as God in the flesh so that we would know God and we would get to know our creator. So that we could draw near to him. Not just so that we could have an abundant life here on earth. Not just so that we could have a relationship with him on earth. But that we would live, spend an eternity with our God and Savior. Amen. That we have hope. Amen. That even though it looks dark and bleak outside, 
I got, I got hope and the blessed assurance that I'm going to be with God through eternity. You know, one of the things I love, I'm coming to an end, you know, one of the things I love about some old-fashioned preaching. Some of the old-fashioned preachers back in the day, they would preach something like this. I know I'm going through hell right now. Maybe I'm going through a dark season right now. Maybe everything is coming against me right now. Maybe the kitchen sink is even coming against me right now. But I know one day I'm going to be walking those streets of gold with Jesus. That I'm going to be singing hallelujah 24 hours a day. That I'm going to be sitting talking to Moses, sitting talking to Paul, sitting talking to Peter. I'm going to be having lunch with Jesus. Maybe he maybe even cook me some fish. But we have a great message. That we loved. He loves us. That we're saved. That God's with us right now. He is Emmanuel. He is with us in every season of our life. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. And also we're going to spend an eternity with the Lord and Savior. But can I share one more thing with you before you switch off? I wonder this year, who could you be the proof for? Who are you the proof for? Who is God going to send to you? Someone that's doubting, someone that's seeking, someone that's not quite sure of what's happening in life. See, because I think that's the best way that we can continue this story. That we've received the gift, then let us also be givers of the gift. That your life, our life, my life, your life, our life is a living testimony. It's proof that he lives in us. And so this Christmas, would you allow your life to be living proof? Would you be an Elizabeth for someone? Would you be an Aiden for someone? Somebody's looking for proof that this message is real. And you and I have the proof that he lives inside of us. Let's pray. Father, we lift those.